I would say that the conflict in Sudan represents a colossal failure of international diplomacy to capitalize on what happened in April 2019 when the brave women and men of Sudan managed to overthrow a dictator who'd been in power for three decades. But they failed to reap the dividends of that revolution because the transitional government was not given sufficient support by the international community. It is quite extraordinary how a country as large as Sudan, the third biggest in Africa, which now borders seven countries, it used to border eight, and then when South Sudan got its independence, I think that's got down to seven countries. So therefore you could see that instability in any part of Sudan is going to have a tremendous destabilizing impact on so many countries in Northeast Africa. And um, it, it really beggars belief that Therefore, it hasn't received more attention than it has. In the short term, there is an absolute dire humanitarian crisis and people are in desperate need of food, of clean water, of medicines. There's been a lack of security, of course, since April and a lack of economic activity. People have not been able to farm and so on. So I would say in the first instance, we need some kind of immediate ceasefire and allow humanitarian corridors right across the country, perhaps across borders, in the case of Darfur, to get supplies in through Chad and so on and so forth to ensure that people get their immediate needs attended to. And then I think there is the issue of how do you stop the two warring generals from fighting on the ground. And I think what there needs to be is a more concerted, united, diplomatic effort internationally. At the moment, we're seeing very splintered efforts. We're seeing one track through Jeddah, which um, involves the United States and Saudi Arabia. We see other tracks through the African Union, um, IGAD, and, and frankly, it's just led to this patchwork of different initiatives, and it's created the space for the generals to continue their, um, their battle. And um, th this is obviously not conducive to, uh, to peace at all. I think in the long term, some kind of future has to be carved out for Sudan, which recognises the fact that it's made up of so many multiple ethnicities. I am a person of optimism, and I would say that amidst all that wreckage of what was Sudan, we still see the resilience of the people, that same spirit that tipped out onto the streets in April 2019 to remove Omar al-Bashir has not been extinguished. And of course, I mean, large parts of the world, particularly in Africa, are predominantly young. You know, in Africa, the average age is 18 or 19, and I mention Africa because it does, sadly at the moment, have a large number of the world's conflicts. And I think their resilience and their, um, they never lose their desire for a better, a better world, a better future for themselves. And I think that we should encourage that uh, resilience and that optimism and help nurture and channel it and help them in whatever way we can by talking to people in positions of power, talking to the people who govern their countries and um, really enable them to try to carve out the peace and prosperity that they crave.